Welcome to the nation's action track winter motor raceway for round three of the 2018 Australian Super Truck Championship. I'm your commentator Lachlan Mansell. It's a beautiful day here at Winter Motor Raceway in regional Victoria as we get set for some awesome truck racing. A good crowd of spectators in attendance and a great truck show as well for people to enjoy the off-track festivities at Winter. It's going to be a mega few races coming up and it's my great pleasure to welcome Gary O'Brien in to the commentary box. How are you going, Gary? Good, thanks, Lockie. Hello, everyone. Really looking forward to this one. What superb weather. What a good build-up we're going to have. Coming into this round, of course, Steve Zamet leads the way on 146 points. Shannon Smith, second on 109. Barry Butwell and Marcus Pruitt's the teammates on 103 and 98, respectively. And Lachlan Fern, the best of the ball line trucks in the Isuzu, ahead of Craig Yardy. Robbie Fern in the ex John Ford Volvo in seventh position, ahead of Frankie Amoroso. It's a really good feeling at the moment. The truck's absolutely performing perfectly. Anything could happen, we're going to sing out the front and stay out there, hopefully. So, no, it's a good feeling being up front. Barry's got a really quick truck and he's going to be holding my heels today. But, you know, we, we sort of set it in cement yesterday. We got the lap record yesterday, something that I set a year ago, which was a 14-year-old lap record from Luke Cedars. So, it's something that we've been working as a team to get. And um, to smash my own lap, or lap record yesterday was a team achievement. So, yeah, it's was, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's been good. It's always hard, but... Um... Yeah, a lot of work goes into it, but it's been good. Uh, the truck's performing probably better than it has, so we're really happy with that. I'm, I think at the moment I'm fourth in the point score, which is probably the best I've ever done. Uh, I, I don't think I'll get any, any better than that. Um, there's some fairly, fairly stiff competition between my team partner Barry and um, Shannon and uh, Steve. Um, yeah, I'm probably doing the best I'll do at the moment, which I'm happy with. Yeah. Oh, the track's a lot better. Witten actually got a special, like a, a mobile pressure washer in and washed all of the uh, bitumen, the, the rubber that was actually impregnated into the bitumen from the last round, where we had so much trouble with uh, trying to get grip. So uh, they bought this pressure washer machine in and drove around the track, and the track's actually spot on now. It's got some really good grip. Yep, we've uh, had some consistency this weekend. The weather's been a lot better than the last meeting. It was wet, dry, wet, so it's hard to get uh, the truck set up for the track. It's, um, it's been good this weekend. There's still a few issues with the back end trying to get it to hang on to the corners, so we'll see how it goes today. Uh, a little bit behind at the moment. Had a couple of misfortune accidents so yesterday and hit the wall yesterday, then blew a turbo charger, so a little bit behind. Yeah, the truck's pretty good on this track. It's a little bit big for this track, but um, yeah, we, we've made some more adjustments on the suspension and um, we've got it going really good at the moment, so best it's going to go. I'm loving it, it's gone really good, pulling up good, just it's got so much power, it's got so much potential, it's just really good. It's pretty difficult because I'm still getting used to it, but it's really good, it's a good track, you get to pick up speed, just it's a bit tight some places, some some places you get to uh, pick up heaps of speed, but it's it's different, you know. Yeah, I love Winton, it suits us little trucks, uh, we sort of, you know, we're, we're a lot more nimble than the bigger trucks, so, you know, the tighter corners really suits our little trucks. Yeah, look, they're all competitors, you know, we're all mates off the field, but um, when we put our helmets on, that's where it all changes. You know, a lot of um, touching up out there, but, um, you know, it's, it's all the uh, the fun of it. Yeah, it's good, perfect conditions, unlike last time, it was rainy all weekend. Actually, being competitive this time, so it's good. Uh, I prefer it much more than Goulburn. Like, the little trucks love the little corners, which is good. They're a bit more competitive, catch up to the bigger ones, so it's, yeah, good fun. Trucks are lining up, getting ready to go for race number two of the weekend. And the man starting on pole position, a man who's very familiar to running up the front. It's the five-time and defending champion, Stephen Zammer, who broke the lap record in race number one before driving on to take the win ahead of Barry Butwell. Shannon Smith will start out of grid position number three. And then it's Frank Averroso, Craig Yardy, Marcus Prilwitz and Lachlan Fern the next ones through with Robbie Fern and Anthony Tringali rounding out our field. Yeah, Zammet won all races at the opening round. He had his work cut out the second. Barry Butwell took a couple of wins of him and here they are lined up side by side. 
is confirmation of your grid position. So Shannon Smith, who's had some good pace at some of the rounds this year, comes into this weekend second overall in the championship. Frank Amoroso, shocker for him last time at Winston Boca Raceway. He'll be looking for a resurgence in form this weekend. Frank Yardy, the best of the light trucks in the Isuzu. We've got plenty of onboard camera angles to cover all of the action for you. We'll be riding on board Shannon Smith in the X. John Bomberly, Kenworth, T900. He's been in the thick of the action in both of the rounds that we've seen so far in the Australian Super Truck Championship as we get ourselves ready for the double file rolling start. Six laps the journey for this opening race of the weekend. Sabbath controls the start, but Butwell will be keen to go with him. He won't want to have the same thing happen in race one where Sabbath just rocked away from the field. Side by side they go down into turn number one and it is Barry Butwell trying to hang tough on the outside of Stephen Zammett. We go on board with the reigning champion and Butwell's going to work hard on the outside and if he can do it, he'll have the inside for the next corner. There's a bump, there's grinding between the two leaders. Zammett gets shuffled back to third because Shannon Smith fires it down the inside and so too does Frank Amoroso heading into the sweeper. is the one that's come out tops here. He's in second position. Smith in third now. Zammett tries to fire back on the inside. Not quite close enough. He won't do it there. That's experience, isn't it, from Frank Amoroso. He saw a bit of bumping and grinding going on between the race leaders. He decided, yep, OK, I'm going to be in the perfect position to capitalise on that. Made up two positions and now runs in second place behind Barry Butwell in the Max Superliner. Oh, and Amoroso gets it wide out of that corner. Can Smith get down the inside of him and get that position away? It's going to be a big breaking duel as they head into the S's. Turns 8, 9 and 10 on this opening lap. Amoroso defensive on the inside. He will hold on to second position. Shannon Smith has to tuck back into third spot. Out of the last corner they come. Butwell with a handy lead. Massive sideways moment for Amoroso. Holds on to it. Moves it across to the inside. I think Shannon Smith got balked up a bit there. Stephen Zammett up to third place. I think Smith bowed out of that. He thought there was going to be drama there and he opted out of it. And what has happened, it's let Zammett through. Frank Amoroso has always been renowned for this flamboyant sideways driving style. Not always the fastest, but he certainly knows how to put on a show. And he was doing it right there. That was full opposite lock that he had coming out of that last corner. But now he's got a couple of hungry Kenworths hunting him down in the form of Stephen Zammett and Shannon Smith. And there Smith had another look at him as we go down towards the cleavage part of the Witten Motor Raceway. Again, though, you can see Amoroso holds sway out in front. And of course, Fate Race has been around since the late 80s been going long and strong and Amoroso has finally won a championship a couple of years ago and but this time I think we might see Zammer go down the inside of him although Amoroso does move across he's done a good job of protecting his position he's pretty hard to pass Frank Amoroso he and Stephen Zammer went wheel to wheel in their battle for the 2014 Australian Super Truck Championship as you mentioned but he's thrown it off the road Frank Amoroso again a big overcorrection on the exit of the final corner that's what it looks like on board, but he's lost a couple of spots at least out of that one. Yeah, and I think he's kicking himself too if he could take his foot off the pedals for long enough. Certainly um, a bad mistake to make there. Great onboard shot, which shows you just how physical the drivers are behind the wheels of these things. Amoroso, the most experienced driver in the field with almost three decades of super truck racing experience. The other driver who's starting to do a pretty good job and work his way into the equation here, Marcus Prilwitz, the second of the Max Superliners. We go on board with him at the moment. That truck's a bit different to some of the others. It runs in what's known as Class B because it runs a full manual gearbox, not the semi-automatic gearbox that the other trucks run. And you can see by the dash, the way it's all lit up there and the gauges, very much modern race machinery. They're not your old uh, double bogeys that they used to run many years ago. It's trying to get on the power coming out of turn number seven. Here's a replay of this was on the opening lap. We saw Stephen Zavitt and Barry Butwell grinding it out. Neither one of them wanted to yield in that battle for the lead, but in the end it was Stephen Zavitt who came off second best. Here's a good shot of it from um, upstairs, you might say, on top of the cabin of Butwell's truck. And you don't really appreciate it from inside just how loose. Zammett uh, got getting out of that corner and what could have potentially brought his uh, race undone very quickly. 
trucks is what it looks like on board with Shannon Smith's truck. So he was tucked up in behind Frank Hammeroso. There goes Stephen Devon off to the right of shot. Shannon Smith on through at the sweeper. And uh, this is why Frank Hammeroso dropped a couple of spots. Massive understeer coming into the second to last corner. Dropped all four wheels off the racetrack. Kept the boot into it to try and not lose too much momentum. But in the end, he had to give away those two spots. Zamet's uh, in car camera, in truck camera in our case, and he uh, sees immediately, yep, I'm past this one, and uh, one-handedly just drives on, takes that position away. There's our race leader, Barry Butwell, in the Mac Superliner. Clear at the moment. Can he hold on, takes a win? He's had a good start. He's certainly got a gap that he needs to try and keep the reigning uh, champion at bay. There's been some times this year where Butwell's pace has been really impressive and he's pulled away at the front of the field with a bit of clear track. His teammate Marcus Brewitz has had a few good results as well. Now, who's what's going on up here? We've got a massive cloud of dust. Somebody's had an excursion somewhere because there was a lot of dirt being kicked up with somebody obviously dropping wheels off the track. That might have been Zamet actually because he's ahead of Smith there. They've still got a fair bit of a, a gap to make up to the race leader. And uh, we can hear more spin of some tyre dramas in the background there as well. But now we can see Pruitt's putting the pressure on Amoroso to get that position away as well. So Shannon Smith has closed right up onto Stephen Zammett in that battle for second and third position. Stephen Zammett still lapping a bit quicker than uh, Shannon Smith at the moment. Barry Butwell currently holds the fastest lap of the race, 1 minute 14.9 set back on lap number two. That's only a tenth of a second away from the lap record that Stephen Zammett set in race one, so Butwell's pace at the front of this field pretty strong. Well, you've got to give credit to Zammett too, because uh, overnight they had to rebuild the bell housing on that truck. It, it split in one of the team's races yesterday and uh, through this man Frank Amoroso, Fate Racing and quite a few of the other teams chipped in as well. They worked till the early hours this morning to get that car back out there and running, or that truck out there and running again. Here's another one of our runners, Robbie Fern in the Volvo Super Truck. Now, this is a truck that was quite successful for quite a few seasons in the hands of John Fork. Robbie Fern bought it a couple of years ago. He and his son Lachlan Fern decided that they were going to go truck racing. And Robbie Fern, every race meeting that he does is he gets more experience, he gets closer and closer to the front of the field. Yeah, he actually had a win in one of the races yesterday and looked likely he might have doubled up, but uh, got uh, even shoulder of going into turn one and put it into the ball. Not heavily, but enough to put him out of the, for the rest of the day. But he's back strong again today and running well. And the other one running a bit further back in the pack there, the international trans star of Anthony Tringali, another relative newcomer to truck racing. That truck made its debut last year. Back on board with Frank Averroso. You can see there that he's got the semi-automatic gearbox so no clutch all the driver has to do with those gearboxes is select the gear a bit like a sequential gearbox in a race car lucky here is shannon smith so he's just fallen off the back of stephen zammett at the moment so zammett looking pretty secure in second position at this stage we are now on the final lap of the race race number two for round number three of the australian super truck championship presented for this round by coburg truck parts and there he is. You can see Smith in the background trying to uh, take the right line, not get that oversteer problem, although he did have a little bit of a brake lock up there going into that corner, but gets it underway quite well as well. So he'll get a nice third out of this if he stays where he is. Had to apply a bit of opposite lock on the exit of turn number five there, Shannon Smith, and more again as well as he gets bit of sideways action going coming out of the last corner but coming through the final sequence of turns to pick up victory in race number two of the weekend here at Winton Rover Raceway. Congratulations to Barry Butwell in the Max Superliner. He is your race winner. He's a potential uh, rival to Zabbitt. There's Zabbitt going across the line now as we speak but Butwell got a couple of wins at the previous round here at Winton Motor Raceway. Just needs to keep that form going now for the rest of today and it'll all come down to the wire when we go to our final round. He's had, as I mentioned, pace at various stages this season, but they've lacked a bit of reliability in that truck. They can keep Barry Butwell's truck on the track, keep him out there finishing races in good positions. 
then he will end up in a pretty good position in the championship. Here's Anthony Tringawi, the new driver that we were talking about earlier. And uh, he finishes up the race in at position number seven. Race winner, Barry Butwell now has one, as opposed to Zamet with one as well. So two more races to go, and it's looking pretty tight at the top. So Barry Butwell, your race winner. Final margin, a bit over seven seconds in the end, back to Stephen Zamet. So the fact that Zamet and Shannon Smith and Frank Amoroso were all battling so vigorously for position in the early laps, Plus, the fact that Butwell had such good pace really allowed him to build up quite a margin at the end. Here's confirmation of the final results. Fastest lap of the race, one in at 14.9, going to Barry Butwell as well. Stephen Zammett, a second across the line. Clear of Shannon Smith, Frank Amoroso, Marcus Pruitt came home in this spot. It was good out there, managed to um, hold on the outside on the first couple of corners and got a bit of a break as from him and as the traffic all mounted up and had the race to myself and just had to concentrate. <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot going on. Me and Barry were neck and neck going through the first two turns and I think we both come together and I think one of his side pods hit the nut cover and steered me in the infield. So, but um, you know, I was quite lucky I recovered, only come back to fourth and watched Frank and um, Shannon have a good dice together and took full advantage of a couple of mishaps. So I'm pretty happy with coming back to second and um, yeah, no, it was a good result for us. It was, yeah, it was uh, pretty exciting. But, um, Frank was uh, all over the shop, he was every which way but straight, but I uh, wasn't sure if he was going to T-bone the wall or I was going to T-bone him, so yeah, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, we got a pretty good start, actually. The two boys in front of him, we were banging uh, wheels down the back straight before we even started the race, actually. And I knew they'd muck up on the first corner, so I got around in a good spot, actually. And uh, it was good for the first couple of laps, but the truck's running out. Once it's gone to about four laps, the tyres are going off. So we're trying to rectify it now, actually. But hopefully the next race will be better. Stephen Zammett and Barry Butwell now won all with race wins. Stick around, because we're going to reverse the field for race three on the other side of this break. The series is going great actually, it's, um, the, the crowds are just increasing every meeting we come to. Um, as you can see there's a lot of things for people to do. Um, we're getting a couple of good sponsors, Coburg Trucks are sponsoring this round um, and it, they've been really terrific. So um, it's I, I just, nothing else I can say about it, it's just, um, it's just been really great, atmosphere is really good. You can't get the 100 mile an hour here but it's, I tell you it's pretty close, just get to about 159, 58. So you just, you know, but Winton, you, at Wakefield, you can actually break the, the speed limit, right? So, but they're exactly the same length. Great, they're both terrific. Time now for race number three, and that means, Gary O'Brien, that we reversed the finishing positions for race number two. So we've got the fast trucks coming through from the back of the field. Yeah, battling each other, particularly our one and two from race one and two. Uh, in uh, Barry Butwell and Steve Salmon. They're going to have to fight their way against each other and get past these other guys. Not easy to do. I don't think there's a category where track position is more important than the super trucks. And we've seen that when you start driving defensively, it can be difficult to overtake. Good to see that uh, one of the light trucks has made it back out onto the circuit. That's Craig Yardy in the Isuzu SBR from up on the north coast of New South Wales. These light trucks can sometimes take the fire up to the bigger and more powerful machines, especially on a technical track like Winton Motor Raceway. And it will be Anthony Tringali who will get to start up the front of the grid by virtue of the fact that he was the last classified finisher in race number two. Yeah, and he's got Rob Fern alongside of him. And we know what he did from yesterday in the team's event. He was very quick in the first race, won that one. I almost had a one-two with uh, Lockie Fern uh, second until basically near the end and just unfortunately had a little bit of an off and finished fourth. But Fern will be strong and there's, of course, we're looking at Steve Zamet, a five times truck racing champion aiming for number six this year. It's looking pretty good for him so far. He's won both of the rounds that we've had coming into this weekend, done a lot of work on his fitness over the off-season. Stephen Zamet, here are your grid positions. Anthony Tringali 
leading ahead of Robbie Fern. Marcus Prilwitz and Frank Amoroso will be on the second row. Shannon Smith and Stephen Zammett on positions five and six. And we go back to Barry Butwell in seventh position. And then the two light trucks of Craig Yardy and Lachlan Fern rounding out the field as the Winton safety car turns its lights out and gets ready to pull off into the pits. It'll be up to our pole sitter, Anthony Tringali, to set the pace at this start, but watch for some of those fast drivers, particularly the likes of Smith, Zammett and Butwell fighting their way through from the rear of the field. You've got to say, Zammett's got a little bit of advantage. He's one row ahead, but that doesn't mean a lot here when you've got that many trucks in front of you. Anthony Tringali, a nice solid start, but Robbie Fern around the outside. Amoroso, we know that his race craft is good. He likes to pick up early race positions and contacts between Stephen Zammon and Shannon Smith, who both end up going across the grass on the apex at turn number two. Barry Butwell decides to stay to the outside to min minimise his chances of being involved. Oh. We've got another one off the road. That's Tringali. Our pulse has gone at the sweeper. Big spin, big cloud of dust, and unfortunately that advantage that he had from starting up the front all gone in the space of a few corners. Now the thing that we did, that Zamet didn't want to do is give away a spot to Butwell, and he has, through not his own fault I might add, but with uh, that little bit of contact with Smith in turn two, but now he's got to do it the hard way, fight back. We're watching Yardy in behind him at the moment in the first of the Isuzus and they should have a good battle those two I reckon as well. The Isuzus they're really good through the corners they don't have the straight line performance of the biggest super trucks as Barry Butwell goes around the outside of his teammate Marcus Prilwith to pick up another spot that we have seen in the past Gary but those light trucks particularly if you put somebody like Steve Pulls behind the wheel still capable of getting a good outright result. Yeah, there could have been a bit of team tactics there. There wasn't. Pruitt lets Zammer get past him and take up the chase as they hunt down our race leaders. So Barry Butwell just ahead of Stephen Zammer, who's just ahead of Marcus Pruitt on board with Stephen Zammer. You can see that that off-season training that he's done is paying dividends because he looks very much relaxed and in control, focused and sharp as you'd expect. And off the road, Frank Amoroso. The sweeper seems to be the action zone in this race. That's two trucks that we've seen off the track there in the space of the opening two laps. Might be a competition to see who can kick up the most dust. I think Frank might have won that one. As he brings the number 96 free car back. Ken Worth around. Doesn't seem to look as relaxed as what Steve Zammett does in the truck though, does he? And I think he'll be anything but relaxed after that big, big moment that we saw at turn number three, the sweeper. Down the straight they go, Fern leads the way. And I think we've got a replay of Tringali having his moment at the turn three sweeper. Let's just see what it looks like from the inside. And this should be uh, quite amusing, I would imagine, as he goes around and gets buried in his own dust. You can see that on the approach to the corner there, he had the steering wheel turned hard left, but he was just coming in there with a bit too much speed, understeered off the racetrack, and then found that the grip level deteriorated quite significantly and uh, had that big spectacular spin. And now we'll have a, another look, but this time it's Frank Amoroso going off. Jay, I'll tell you what, Barry Butwell, who we were on board with, was lucky not to copy him. Barry Butwell almost ran out of road on the exit as well. Yeah, actually, I might have to take that back. I think uh, Tringali got the bigger dust storm than what uh, Frank did. Now yeah. we've got Butwell moving down the inside of Smith. Bit of touch. One way to go around your teammate, oh, your team rival is to give him a bump out of the way. Muscles his way down the inside at turn number one and Shannon Smith's got more problems as well. Goes off the circuit at turn two. There goes Stephen Zammett through on the inside. So Shannon Smith copping the hip and shoulders as we get into the middle stages of this race. Stephen Zammett can see Barry Butwell, his main rival, streaking further and further up the road. Doesn't want to give away too much time to him. Robbie Fern's done a really good job in this race though. Hold on to the lead for as long as he can but now he cops a bit of a tap from Barry Butwell just to escort him wide and Stephen Zammett will go through and pick up second place as well. Yeah, that damaged Butwell as well. I think he was, by well, yeah, that little bit of contact has allowed Zammett to close right in on the back of Butwell. So this is going to be interesting over the next couple of laps. It's really a good battle. We know that both of these trucks have been fast this weekend. We know that Stephen Zammett is the championship leader. We know that Barry Butwell's capable of winning races. Between the two of them, it should be a very entertaining dice. 
bump well will not make it easy whatsoever for Stephen Zammett to get through. Yeah, I noticed there that uh, Butler seems to be a bit stronger in the braking package, but um, I think Zammett might be a bit stronger out of the corner. So they've got their pluses and minuses, and I think that's working uh, for them both, and their times are fairly similar. Marcus Pruitt's on board his truck as he fires his way around the track as well. He's a cool customer, isn't he? And just absolutely loves truck racing. Him and his teammate, Barry Butwell. I think if you had to think about the stereotypical truck racing driver, both Marcus and Barry fit that description perfectly. And there's Marcus Primwitz now, who has one of the light trucks up behind him. That's Craig Yardy putting a bit of pressure on. Yeah, and I noticed Amoruso coming back through the field behind that as well. Here's our one and two on the road at the moment. Barry Butwell and Steve Zammett fighting it out not only in the series, but for this round as well. And it's more important, I guess, for Butwell to get these points this weekend, get himself back in the fight for the championship proper. When they first built that Max Superline, the straight line performance was the thing that they were chasing to be able to take the fight up to the likes of Stephen Zammett. The development work that they've done in the last couple of seasons is starting to pay off. They've had their mechanical problems with turbo failures and engine dramas, but when the Max Superliners are running reliably, it is every bit as quick as some of the other trucks, and Barry Butwell's demonstrating that at the moment. They're not too far back behind them. Shannon Smith and Robbie Fern still at it for position three. There's been a change there, of course, because Shannon Smith was behind Fern earlier in the race. More drama going on here as well, as we see Frank Amoroso <laughs> give the hip and shoulder to Craig Yardy and gets past him on his way back up the order. Frank Amoroso obviously on the comeback trail after his turn three indiscretion earlier on. This battle continues between Butwell and Zammett. Stephen Zammett setting the fastest lap of the race in a one minute 14.9. So again, only a tenth of a second away from the lap record that he set in race one. So the track is quick, the truck's punching out good lap times. Barry Butwell getting down into the low 15s as well. So these two really setting a scorching pace at the front. Yeah, see Sam had got a better run out of that last corner on the way down the back straight. And then has to try and close in into what I think is a slightly superior braking package that Butwell owns. And heads him across the start finish line once more. Stephen Zammett definitely seems to have a really good straight line pace. As you mentioned there, Gary comes out of the corners and accelerates up to top speed really quickly. Barry Butwell, though, able to go a bit deeper under brakes and just cover off some of those overtaking opportunities by carrying a bit more speed into the corners. Craig Yardy really slides the truck the little Izuzu. When I say little, <laughs> little compared to the Kenworths and Max that he's fighting against. Meanwhile, we're back with our race leader and Zamat's only got a couple of corners and oh, Butwell's just gone wide out of there. There's a bit of a touch. Is it gonna go all the way around? They're going around through the cleavage at the moment, almost side by side. And Butwell's gonna try and run him out of room to make sure he doesn't lose its spot. Zamat comes back or tries to. Only a couple of corners left now, so get out onto the back straight for the last time. Great exchange, wasn't it, between those two? So Stephen Zammett got alongside. Barry Butwell was probably a bit lucky that the next corner was a left-hander because he got away with the mistake that he made. Through he comes, turns 9 and 10 for the last time, and Barry Butwell is going to just hold on to pick up his second race victory of the weekend, but not without Stephen Zammett throwing absolutely everything that he had at his disposal in the run to the finish line. Almost threw the truck into the wall in the bargain. But he got it there, second of course, Shannon Smith in third. And it should be Robbie Fern, the next one across the line. And the, <laughs> it looks like uh, Pruitt's has just held out Amoroso, has he? Just one tenth of a second, the final margin between those two. So Amoroso pulled out of the line, didn't quite get ahead though when they crossed it at the critical point. So really close finishes all the way up and down the field. And here comes Lachlan Fern as well. Good to see that he was back out on the track for race number three and he will bring the light truck across the line in at position number eight. And Anthony Tringali, who started the race out of pole position but disappeared in a big cloud of dust after a few corners, he will come across to complete the finishes in position nine. Here's a replay of how it looked out of the final couple of corners. 
Barry Butwell, very smooth. Stephen Zammett throwing the Kenworth across the curves and running right out across the exit ripple strip all the way to the tyres out of turn 10. Yeah, a bit of axle trap there coming out of that final corner as he bounced it across the curb. Here we got it on board. Butwell's truck as they come through that final corner. You can see how much exit pace he had, and uh, that wall gets curiously close by the time they got to the start finish line. I reckon Zam had got within a couple of millimetres of glancing the tyres there coming out of that final turn. That was seriously close. <laughs> Hands off the wheel there at one point. Did you see that? Wow. Oh. <laughs> Excellent stuff from Steve Zammett. Fight all the way to the line, so never give up. Pretty good terminology. Great entertainment for the big crowd who you can see standing on the fence there, watching and cheering the trucks on as they came out of that final corner. Look at that, clapping uh, the winner. with Steve Hammond in the truck on the right there. There's our results. Barry Butwell takes the win, and you can see there's just four tenths of a second or just under to Steve Zammett. Shannon Smith in third, Robbie Fern in fourth, Marcus Pruitt again comes across the line in fifth. Frank Amoroso recovering from his earliest spin to finish up in position six. Craig Yardy, best of the light trucks ahead of Lachlan Fern. I didn't think that we would actually get through the whole field, but we managed to get through there. A little bit of beef and bash, but it wasn't too much carnage, so it was good. The worst one was probably up just after the sweeper. Um, Robbie was just a bit slow into the corner. I've given him a little tap, and then I've been, been given a huge tap in the back and straight back into Robbie again. So it was like a bit of a ping pong ball. <laughs> but um, yeah, we managed to get through it and get around him, so it was good. Well, we went out, um, went out starting from the rear with Barry, and going up in the turn one, I jumped over the back of Shannon Smith's bumper bar, and we got tangled, and we were locked together. So we both went for an infield run, and yeah, so eventually we got unstuck, and then we carried on with the race, and yeah, it was quite eventful. So we um, ended up getting up to the front with Barry, and diced it out all the way to the end. So it was quite, quite close on the finish line, but no, Barry just snipped it up and got, and got me on the finish line. So it was all full credit to his team. Yeah, it was the first turn. It was a bit of a bit of a circus. I'd um, Stephen pushing me. He was hooked onto me. I think he was hooked onto me anyway. I couldn't steer. It went up the dirt, and then it was um, all dust and smoke. Oh, well, it was my first time in the lead, so I got nervous. I was trying to keep up with all the big leaguers and uh, went off the track too much power. Just try to stay at the back and work my way up, I guess. Or maybe maybe next time if I do it, just don't worry about everyone else. They got to worry for me, I guess getting set for the fourth and final race. Who will prevail in the super truck battle? We'll find out the answer to that question after the break. I'm involved with a charity called uh, Isabella and Marcus Foundation which is brain cancer research for young children, and uh, we're here to try and raise money for that cause. They're beautiful trucks, each and every one of the credit to their owners. Uh, I wish there was more, and we're gaining, we're, we're trying to gain as many as we can for the cause and for the truck racing. You know, we get people in here to watch the truck racing, and more crowd, more atmosphere, and uh, hopefully everyone come up and have a good time. In price-wise, we're going about $6 million. That's a lot of money, but as you can see, there's some old trucks here and some new trucks here, and we're just passionate about our jobs and our trucks, and, and we like to keep them clean. It's a 1993 Ford LTL 9000. Um, it's got a, what, an engine 14 Cummins in it, uh, 15 speed direct with three seven Edens on it. So, um, I've had it for two years now and spent spending whatever I can on it, trying to work it as much as I can. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, it's a 2015 um, 950 Legend. Uh, only 75 of them were made, and I was lucky enough to get um, number 46 out of the 75. Um, do a bit of work with it, just from Melbourne to Shep. Um, do Aubrey every now and again. But um, yeah, other than that, I'm the only one that drives it, so it's pretty good for that. It's a 1996 Peterbilt um, that we sort of bought probably about 10 years ago. It's had about three refurbs, um, and now we're lucky enough to have a driver in it that looks after it, and he's real proud of driving it, so you can see that's why it's looked after the way it is. Oh, it's, I just looked at it on the way here. Actually, it's got uh, 1.8 million miles. So it's done a few. That's why it's had a few rebuilds on it. Uh, it's got a C15 cat. It did um, have an electronic, sorry, it's got an electronic motor in it now. 
It had a mechanical one, but when that uh, ended up dying, we did put a C15, which is a more modern type of motor, good fuel economy and things like that. Oh, if you look after them, we've got trucks that do 2 million Ks if you do the right service intervals and things like that. So yeah, you get a fair bit out of them if you look after them. A great assortment of trucks on display in the paddock and great to see such a big contingent of spectators have turned out the Winter Motor Raceway not just to enjoy the on-track action but to support the very worthy cause off the track as well. Getting ourselves set for the fourth and final race of the weekend and the scorecard is like this. Barry Butwell has two wins to his credit so far. Stephen Zammett, the single race win, it's all to play for in this fourth and final race for round number three of the 2018 Australian Super Truck Championship. And lurking in the background, Shannon Smith, of course, will be more than capable of taking the fight up to them, particularly if they get into each other like they did at the start of race two. We've seen plenty of panel rubbing action, haven't we? We've seen a few drivers making mistakes and we've seen that there's not been a whole lot of love lost between drivers when it comes to the panel rubbing. We know that it's great camaraderie off the track and they all help each other with their machines when they get on the track, gloves are off, and it is seriously intense competition. Now, the grid positions for this race are going to be a reverse grid race based on the results from qualifying. So once again, Gary, it'll be the fast drivers who have to work their way up through the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for Steve Zammett, he qualified faster, so he's right at the back. So he's got the hard job ahead of him. His arch rival, Barry Butwell, will start ahead of him. Great competition between both Zammett and Butwell all weekend. Shannon Smith, we've seen him in the mix in the previous rounds, and in fact, he is second in the points, just ahead of Barry Butwell. What can he do in this final race? Anthony Tringali once again on pole, and ahead of Robbie Fern. Tringali will be hoping for not a repeat of the mistake that he made in race three. Craig Yardy next ahead of Marcus Frilwitz, then Frank Amoroso, then Shannon Smith, and then the fast drivers coming through from the back in the form of Barry Butwell and Stephen Zammer. It must be a bit of a nervous time for Anthony Tringali having to head this, knowing what happened in the last race. He won't want the same thing happening again. He's got uh, Robbie Fern alongside of him, and Fern did beat him into the first corner the last time. Can he do it again? He does, and goes straight to the lead. Tringali just getting pinched up on the inside curb there. Sometimes at the start of these races, it's actually better to be on the outside. You can carry a bit more momentum through. Zammett and Butwell again making contact on the run up to turn number two. Then Zammett gets forced wide off the racetrack by the driver who's been his arch rival all weekend and muscling in there on the inside as well. Zammett cops another hit, another tap and just about manages to hang on to it. Tringali once again firing it off the road as well on the exit of turn number three, the sweeper. Certainly not as dramatic as his uh, first encounter. Look at this, as Butwell fires his way up the inside of Yardley and gets that job done. And, <laughs> and they don't mind rubbing panels, do they? They're really getting into this. By the time Anthony Tringali arrived on the scene, it was hard to work out where the racetrack actually was. Then not that much dust kicked up. There's Trucks. more coming off the back straight as well. Or well, the start of the back straight, and now you can see them starting to settle down. Once you get over that initial uh, jousting, I'll call it, because that's what it was like. And here's uh, Butwell trying to go around the outside of Amoroso down into that left-hander. He has to slip back in behind him because he uh, just runs out of road. And look who's coming there as well, trying to sneak up the inside. It's Steve Zammett on Barry Butwell. He needs to get ahead of him as soon as he can, at least square the round, if nothing else. Doesn't quite do it there, though. He had a great run out of the final corner there, Stephen Zammett, but Butwell just moves it across to the inside. And I don't think Zammett had anywhere to go as Amoroso once again has a big moment. Butwell to the outside. There won't be space there, and that has opened the door for Stephen Zammett, who jams the number one Kenworth down the inside and moves ahead of Barry Butwell. That's a critical move. That's a fantastic move. Sees the opportunity to get through. Gets it all out of shape at the very next corner, but holds on to it. And now Amoroso, and oh, they're all into it. Amoroso goes around. Butwell's caught up into it. There's dust and soot and smoke and you name it. And two trucks stopped while the race continues. Oh, that's a bit of a shame for Barry Butwell because he had had such good pace in the previous two races, but he was lost an enormous amount of time there being caught up in that incident. So it was Zammett who got into the back of Amoroso 
Amoroso spun, Butwell had nowhere to go, and Amoroso, by the looks of it, might have copped a bit of damage in that contact and has not been able to get restarted. Let's have a look at the replay and see how long unfolded. Well, Lee, you can see that Amoroso led the way. Then we got Zamet out of shape, but then straightened it up to try and go down the inside at the next corner. And then, of course, Amoruso went a little bit wide. I think Zamet checked up and Butler thought, well, I can get through here, but unfortunately, there was a spinning Kenworth coming back across his path and the rest were lost in the dust. I think it was on the approach there, it was almost a case of Butwell getting into the side of Zamet and pushing him into Amoroso. As you mentioned there, Zamet was pretty loose on the way into the corner and oh, Shannon Smith was involved as well. Uh -huh. So Smith actually got into the back of Butwell, who got into the side of Zamet, who got into the back of Amoroso. So it was a bit of a chain reaction. Here we get to big car in truck footage of it. So this is on board with Stephen Zammett. Look at how much opposite Lockie was applying on the way into the corner. He missed Amoroso there. Bang, there's the hit from Butwell and then Zammett into the side of Amoroso. And Amoroso was the unlucky one who got turned around and turfed off the racetrack. And look at Amoroso looking out the right hand side driver's window, steering left, steering right. Trying to get it back under control. In the end, he took his hands off the way wall together because he was getting belted from pillar to post. And a fair bit of that dust that we saw getting kicked up found its way into Amoroso's cabin as well. Bit of damage on Robbie Fern's right mud guard as well. But he's still going, I'd say. Oh, and uh, the rear as well has got a bit of damage on it. Might be ever flat there, maybe. So in all of that drama, let's not forget, Gary, that this is the battle for the lead that we're watching at the moment. So... Robbie Fern and also Marcus Prilwitz have capitalised on all of that drama but Robbie Fern's not going to stay in the lead for long because that right rear tyre is rapidly parting company with the rim and uh, Marcus Prilwitz and also Stephen Zammett will be lining up and relegating Robbie Fern back in a real hurry. Oh, Prilwitz <laughs> has got down the inside but I think he's running a bit wide on the exit and uh, you can see there through. in the background that Zammett is looking to find a way through as is Shannon Smith. Yeah. Unfortunately, Fern has to bow out of that as the race continues. He's not giving up, Robbie Fern. I suppose that's one of the things about having dual rear wheels, isn't it? If Indeed one, it one is. of your rear tyre goes, you've still got three other ones. Now we've got Zamet on Pruitt's as they come up to complete another lap. Goes down, tries to go down the outside. Just no room there. I would suspect he should get good drive off this very last corner and try and slip it up the inside. No, he's going to go outside, and that might be enough for him to get past as well. Looks like he carried that momentum through. No, had to pull out of it. It was offline. Couldn't quite do it there. So Pruitts would like to make this his race if he can, and it'll help his teammate as well. This is some great defensive driving from Marcus Prilwitz. He's making that Max Superliner really wide. He's driving it down the inside of every corner. He's going to make Stephen Zammett work ever so hard if Zammett wants to get the lead. And what that is allowing as well is Shannon Smith to buy into this contest as well. Zammett's going to have to get a bit creative for this. He looks to the inside, but once again, Prilwitz takes the shallow line into the corner up there through the top end complex at turn number five and Zammett will start to do a bit of Morse code on the rear of the number 31 Coburg Truck Parts Mac as he tries to figure out a way of getting himself through into the race lead. Oh, now he's just thrown it away. Got too much uh, oversteer out of that corner. It's allowed Zammett to run down the outside of him. He may be able to uh, pull this move off now with that extra momentum he got out of the corner. Gets in on the corner so he must be ahead. We only had the in-truck in camera to see that, and certainly he has. So Steve Zammett finally gets to the front of the field after his win in race one and two seconds, and a bit of a brush trying to get past uh, Prilwitz was uh, Shannon Smith there. Didn't quite do it, though. Wasn't quite close enough to force the move after that initial contact. What we normally see once Steve Zammett gets out in front is that he's very hard to run down. And with positions as they are at the moment, because of all of that time that Butwell lost in the altercation that we saw getting up into turns four and five, it's uh, looking like it's probably going to be Stephen Zammett's round win as well. Of course, Butwell's still got a bit of time and a few chances to make up some more places, but Zammett looking pretty good in terms of the overall weekend results go at this stage. Yeah, Pruitt's is doing a pretty good job there. He's got a little tap to let let him know that uh, Smith wants to come through on this. 
and he'll give him another little bump as well. <laughs> the Morse code is uh, getting out the window and it's getting a bit tougher, <laughs> i.e. hitting harder to try and get past. And Prilwitz is doing nothing wrong. He's guiding, guarding the line all the way down, but in the end there, Shannon Smith tries the outside. Unfortunately, he's um, heading off the pit lane. I don't think he intended to go there, but ready out of road to go right. So I had to go down the lane and lose an pot. And this could work in the favour of Barry Butler now because now that he's rejoined ahead of him, he's had an opportunity to pick up another place. This is not a bad recovery drive for Barry Butwell. He's cleared the trucks of Robbie Fern and Craig Yardy and he's now not that far behind Shannon Smith. So you have to give credit to Marcus Prilwitz there as well. The defensive lines that he was driving, it was making Shannon Smith get a bit frustrated. Smith took a risky decision to try and make an outside passing manoeuvre at the end of the back straight. It didn't pay off. He made a mistake and he fired it off the road. And Krilwitz, you would have to say, now looking pretty comfortable in P2 heading into this final lap. Yeah, and uh, well, that's what teammates are all about. You help where you can, even if it means that you've got to drive a bit defensively and you make sure that your, your, your opponents are held up and your teammates are coming through. And, that's exactly what happened now, Ken. But we'll do anything about Smith on this the final lap. We know Zamet's out in front, Pruitt's is in second. This is where the battle is now for third spot. He's already carrying a truck with a few battle scars, is Barry Butwell, so a few extra knocks probably won't worry him too much. Coming out of the last corner though, picking up the round win to complete his perfect score for round victories in 2018. It's another weekend win for Stephen Zamet, who extends his championship lead Marcus Prilwitz, great defensive drive to finish up in second position. And Barry Butwell has got ahead of Shannon Smith in that final complex of corners to move up into third position. And he will take second overall for the round as well. And Robbie Fern just across the line in front of Craig Yardy to fill out that position. Bruised and battered the trucks were this weekend. As we see Lachlan Fern and and the Tringali truck come across the line, line a certain of each other. The confirmation of your race results. It's another race win for Stephen Zabbitt. Prilwitz, Butwell Smith and Robbie Fern, your top five. And it was Craig Yardy followed by Lachlan Fern and Anthony Tringali with Frank Hammaroso, a non-finisher after the damage that he sustained in the incident early in the race. Oh yeah, it was definitely a struggle. I had to, definitely had to work for that one. We uh, nearly ended up on its lid going through the sweep. I think it was up on two wheels, so I am um, lucky to save that one and we just got on with it. And you know, we um, I think we were the lucky one who survived that big uh, incident at the top of the top of the track. So I'm uh, very lucky with it. The carnage that was happening behind me worked in my favour. That's that's about the size of it. And um, yeah, I think it was a, it was a terrific race for you know for the entire race. I had to work and work and work to hold my spot. Um, yeah, really happy with the result. Yeah, really good. Oh, just the traffic in there, I don't know um, exactly what happened. Um, but somebody gave me a, a hit into that top corner, which pushed me straight into Steve, Stephen, and then that pushed him into Frank Amoroso. Amoroso spun around in front and it's all just a blur from then, just whack, whack, whack. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure, but I got, uh, she was a pretty big hit. I think it was bigger than one of Elvis's hits, I can tell you. Uh, it's torn the bits over there, you can see it's torn a tail shaft out of it. Uh, been all the torque rods and everything, the diff's all hanging there with some chains, otherwise it all would have fallen out. So uh, hopefully we can uh, put it back together enough to drive it up on the trailer, if, if we're lucky. One round remaining in the Super Truck Series for 2018, and it's a 44-point championship lead to Stephen Zammett, but it is close in the contest for second, with just three points separating Shannon Smith and Barry Butwell. Lachlan Fern currently the best place of the light truck drivers in fifth position. Not much in it, though. Craig Yardy just behind him. Then we've got Robert Fern, uh, Frank Gamoroso, of course, having a shocker. We'll be back there anyway. Well, Barry Butwell made him work hard for it, but Stephen Zammett got the job done in the end and he heads to the final round of Wakefield Park on the 10th and 11th of November in a commanding championship position. Hope you've enjoyed all of the action from round three of the Australian Super Truck Championship from Winton Motor Raceway. On behalf of Gary O'Brien, I'm Lockie Mansell. See you next time. Bye for now.